I think it was weak. I mean, it, not weak. I think it was a weaker episode than like there are other episodes that were better. And I don't think yeah. the finale was the strongest episode, which is sad because it should be. It should be one of the stronger ones. They had giraffes. Like, they come had on, giraffes. <laughs> <laughs> Why were they there? Why were there giraffes? I don't understand. Why but, were the giraffes eaten? Yeah, I'm confused. <laughs> yeah. Easy targets, right? I don't know. Hey, how's it going? My name's Tanya. My name's Olivia. And we're Fangirl Feels. We meet and talk about content that we love and content that causes us to have lots of feelings. Oh yeah, all the feels. Could be books, shows, movies, music? Music. No. Music, maybe. Video Sometimes. games. Yeah. And games, yeah. Games, if, oh, we yeah. Play, if we were playing some game. But speaking of games, uh, The Last of Us, huh? Wow. Great transition. That? That's <laughs> incredible. But games, back in my day, games were not like this. Games were like Mario, not like the most emotionally compelling story I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like <laughs> cinematography in a game, that, that wasn't the case. No. So I'm sure everyone was watching either the Oscars and The Last of Us or either or, or they switched over like we did and we'll probably watch some of the Oscars later, who knows. But uh, we wanted to give our initial thoughts after seeing the episode. It just aired like less than an hour ago and Olivia and I are gonna yeah. talk about it now. Um, yeah. So I wrote down my, my thoughts as I was watching it. I just like kind of wrote like bullet points <laughs> of like what I was thinking as I was watching it. Um, and I'll just go down the list. Uh, damn it, Ellie, you dropped the ladder. Couldn't believe she did that. I was like, wow, really? He's being so nice to you, come on. Uh, why don't humans ride giraffes, truly? Like, why haven't we domesticated them to to live with humans? Yeah. Fair. <laughs> I have thoughts on the giraffes. I have thoughts. Oh, okay. Um, we'll time heals all wounds. It wasn't time that did it. It was so sad. It's <laughs> so cute and sad. It was so many emotions. Uh, punch a wall. (laughs) 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 So cute. So adorable. Uh, Happiness is fleeting in this universe with the flash bomb. Like, there's only two seconds of happiness, and we know this. And I'm still surprised every time. I'm like, oh. oh." (laughs) Point. It was like we barely we got like a whiff. It was like I'm parched. I'm parched for happiness. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Take it and away. then all downhill. Yeah. Uh, Joel doesn't want peace. He wants problems. Always. That That's Joel. Uh, morals out the door every time we see this show. Rooting him on. Get him. You got this. <laughs> People who could save the world, kill him. Let's go. Uh, no notes. No notes. Perfect. <laughs> Perfection. No notes. Perfection. Uh, <laughs> and then at the end, a rift. It's clear there's a rift. She knows he was lying. And uh, yeah, those are my thoughts. What about you? Oh, those are good thoughts. Um, my first thought is too short in all caps. In all caps. Um, started crying at the first scene immediately. I don't even know why. I was just like immediately sobbing. I was like, we have we barely started. Like, why am I crying? Like, what's happening? Um, I thought the whole like Ellie's mom was just incredible. A really cool storyline. Um, and that's the actress that plays Ellie in the video game. So that's like kind of a cool circle moment. Did you know that? I didn't know that. That's really cool. Yeah, that's like the voice actress of Ellie. So it's kind of a cool circle moment. Um, yeah, I also had Joel admitting he tried to kill himself. At that whole thing, punch a wall. Yeah. Uh, a very emotional setting. Uh, and then the Ellie's like, rea- like her being clearly traumatized from the last episode, like all the things that occurred. I appreciate seeing that. And it's like so sad, like the entire time that he was trying to like cheer her up and it's like the most open we have we've seen him and she is just like not in a place to receive it yeah it's like breaks my heart until they were and then like you said flash bomb flash bomb like we never get anything good Mm -mm. um i am team joel unapologetic unapologetic well i can't say that word unapologetically yeah no notes (laughs) support mass massacre support murder (laughs) no i don't um no 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 yeah but it's yeah i think my first initial impressions are just too short uh but i think yeah no notes with joel however i understand why ellie will be upset but we can get into more of my thoughts around his decision because i have thoughts around it 
that was actually my next question for us to talk about is what were your okay. thoughts? Because I also have thoughts too. I think they might align based off what you've written here. Uh, what yeah. do you think Joel should have done? Uh, I mean, I agree with his decision. Like, no notes. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, keep saying that. I like, if you did, you watch like the end, the uh, like the making of the episode, like they're when they mm -hmm. talk, the creators talk about it. Yeah. And I think it was like Neil Druckmann or maybe it was Craig Mays, I'm not sure which one, who was like, this is the easiest decision he's ever made. And I'm like, yeah, that makes sense to me. Like, no questions asked that he would make that decision. And I don't disagree with the decision. Do I agree with the massacre part of it? I mean, no, I, I could have done some different things, but I like, yeah. don't disagree with the decision to go in there, like, at all. Yeah. I, I feel very similarly on that, that like, if you were to put yourself in their shoes, like they've been through a, what, a 20 plus year pandemic or yeah, pandemic, right? Is that what you call what's happening? Yeah. Um, zombie apocalypse, you know, all morals go out the door, right? You turn into a different person. He misses his daughter. Like the one thing that was like keeping him going for a long time. And now Ellie is this like uh, analogy, uh, you know, analogous to his daughter. So I can understand like his feelings. And I talked to my brother after about it, after too, and he has a daughter and he's like, you know, obviously morally we wouldn't go and massacre a bunch of people, especially people who were gonna potentially save the world. It's it's a selfish decision. But if that was my daughter, yeah, I would go Keanu Reeves on everyone. <laughs> yeah. Immediately. I'm um, sure. But I agree with you that like, what should have happened was the the firefly should have asked ellie it, the, everyone should have asked ellie what was her choice and that's yes. the decision and, and she might have chosen that way but like what was the rush what were we rushing yeah. for <laughs> that is my yeah you read my notes it's like that was a thing it was like i am sympathetic to ellie and i understand why she's going she what she is upset like and she will be upset when she finds out the truth because i'm assuming she will at some point but like yeah why did they ask like there's a specific moment where marlene is like we didn't even tell her she's just going into surgery she's going to sleep and i think that was an intentional like why would they say that otherwise like why would yeah. they write that in the script and to me that is like the, the significant defining detail of like why i don't disagree with joel because it's like you didn't even ask her you're just assuming that she would say yes and maybe she would but you're giving you're not even giving her the choice if they didn't give her the choice and then yeah, Joel, I guess, didn't give her the choice, but they also did, he didn't have a chance to give her the choice. Like, it, they were yeah. going to kill her. They didn't give him oh, the I, choice either. Yeah. In, no. Like, the process. Like, someone who he's built trust with, Ellie, you know, he's gonna obviously not be okay with it. Yeah, they took the choice away from both. Like, they didn't, they didn't care. And it's like, that decision is like, immediately undermines the entire experiment. And when she was like, ex like explaining, like, oh, they think that it's like, this will happen. I don't even know. Like, um, what did they say that like they the cordyceps thinks that she's cordyceps so if they like take out the the fungus and like whatever they do whatever science that it will maybe they kept using those words like think and maybe I'm like this is not good enough yeah <laughs> like, it's not good enough yeah it's we need, not we need consent here <laughs> yeah you saying think and maybe these are not good enough reasons i understand it's not like a normal world but you're just too scared to ask her and it's that's not a good enough reason it's not and i understand again like it's like putting yourself in the shoes of people who are like trying to solve a world pandemic after a zombie apocalypse and i can understand i can put myself in their shoes but then like i can also put myself in joel's shoes who shoots them you know <laughs> so, yeah. i get it <laughs> yeah and um, especially like seeing him like we both of us mentioned like the whole that time wasn't what did it like seeing those moments before that it's like can you imagine being him and being like i just i've given like i have opened this my heart back up to this girl like yeah. i've like allowed myself to love someone again like a daughter and like literally 10 minutes later or whatever time it's like he's facing her death again like it's just yeah. unbelievable <laughs> like there's no doubt about yeah. it he would the perfect it. storm for that to happen yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I know you've been scrolling Twitter too, and one of my favorite tweets that I've seen so far is uh, this whole episode as the trolley problem, and Joel is the conductor who turns the train towards killing the people and saves Ellie. It's just very spot on. <laughs> it is, but I don't blame him. Yeah. It's like, in that situation, this is like not a normal situation too. It's like, yeah, post-apocalyptic world. There's so many unknowns. 
And this is the only thing that he knows that he can do. So how could you possibly blame him or, or even disagree with him for doing what he did? I don't know. I just don't right. Know. You can, yeah, definitely understand and agree with what he did. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. And I like what you, you also wrote, like, uh, they did a good job of showing Joel's decision was selfish. Like, the fact that he lied to her. You know what I mean? That on top of, like, what he did, he lied to her, and she could probably tell. That was another level of, like, deceit that you know is going to show up in the subsequent seasons. Yeah. Yeah, I I think, because, you know, I knew that this ending was coming. Like, I because I, yeah. I'd seen the game. Um, and I think that the show did a better job of showing that, yeah, he was selfish with this. I think partially because of like him talking to her about like how he's opened up again, and, like his relationship with her has helped heal the pain that he's had. Yeah. And like, and there's a little bit too of because he isn't, he's just trying to cheer her up and isn't exactly understanding necessarily what she's going through. It is selfish that it ultimately he makes this decision like to save her when he, when she would have wanted it. Maybe, maybe, maybe yeah. <laughs> like it is selfish, but again, I don't disagree. Right. It makes sense. <laughs> it makes sense. No notes. Although we had a no, lot of notes. Lots of notes, but yeah. <laughs> awesome. So the next topic was just the breakdown of the season, our thoughts um, from beginning to end. Uh, I was curious, what were your initial expectations for the TV show adaptation? Um, I don't know. I didn't know the game until the show started. I know I'd heard of the game because I was on Tumblr in like 2013 <laughs> and that, that's when the game came out, but I didn't have any expectations. Well, if I'm thinking of like when I saw a trailer, I just thought it was going to be like a basic apocalypse show. I was a little bit intrigued, but I didn't think much of it. And then it wasn't until you guys said you were going to watch it that I decided to watch it. I think like in our Slack channel is what motivated me to watch it. So I don't mm. know. No, not many expectations. It exceeded them. I'm in a similar boat. I didn't know much about it. I had just like heard of it that it was like a great game. Like I'm sure you're on Reddit as well. Um, I just see people posting about it, but I didn't know specifics. And like I've been a fan of Pedro for a while, and so I, I knew that he was going to be in this adaptation, but I didn't know what that meant. I was like, it's probably going to be stellar because he's in it. I already know everything he touches turns to gold. <laughs> um, True. But like, I'm sure I ha you had similar hesitations too, probably that like anything adaptations can be so hit or miss. Like, I think they they've done previous like game adaptations, I think with like Final Fantasy and it's like been terrible so bad. Really? Yeah. yeah. And then you see book adaptations that. that aren't great as TV shows or movies. And so I was just worried. But like, I think maybe because our initial expectations were we didn't know a lot about the game. Maybe our expectations are higher than what someone who knows the game might have said i don't know i, I would, I'd yeah. want to know what like the community is saying who actually plays the game but the fact that they were so inclusive of the game the original game like crew like the cast like that is incredible and i'm sure they're appreciative of that yeah i think it's a good sign or like it that's a good lesson for other people doing adaptations like the fact that they included the original actors the like yeah, the cast, like you said, crew, whoever was involved, I think is important. Like I'm thinking of the Avatar The Last Airbender adaptation that's coming up and the creators have left. I'm yeah. like, that's not a good sign. Yeah, <laughs> like, we're gonna talk about that one when that comes up for sure. We will, yeah. <laughs> I'm hopeful, I'm genuinely hopeful of that one. This is a side conversation, but like, yeah. yeah, it's not a good sign when the creators are not in it. And this one, it seems like it was a labor of love. Mm -hmm. And the fact that it even got us to watch it is impressive because this is not my, I was not, a, I didn't have any big emotions towards Pedro Pascal before this show. Now I am number one fan. Sorry, you push you away. <laughs> oh, <me. no. laughs> I am number one fan. No, I'm kidding. We can but, be thrall. Um, we, he can have many wives. <laughs> we'll, we'll do this together. He has millions at this point. Yeah. <laughs> if not billions. Teetering on billions. Probably. Yeah. Becoming a problem. Most yes, of us yeah. way younger than him. That's true. That's, that's true. true. Yeah. Even Another us, like, thing. like I it, he's still what, like maybe like 15 years older than me, which is like doable, yeah. It's <laughs> still acceptable. could he could he be your father still? Yes. Yeah. But it's a little more socially acceptable. <laughs> yeah. We got Gen Z beat on this one a little bit. A little bit, yeah. 
but yeah I, i'm like i'm not an apocalypse show fan i don't like those types of shows I don't care about the zombies just not interested and this show had little to none no zombies <laughs> so yeah that got me that's why i was okay with it overall tasteful zombie i'm i'm different actually we differ in this where i really love post-apocalyptic shows apocalyptic shows yeah. um i don't always love zombie i love horror and so I was like skeptical going into this because I'm not always the biggest zombie fan. Like I liked, I've seen a couple seasons of The Walking Dead. One of my favorite movies is Train to Busan. If you've seen it, it's like a Korean um, no. horror film about zombies. It's just really well done. Uh, and I also don't like blood and gore, which typically comes with zombie movies. Um, so I went into it like skeptical, like the apocalypse stuff could get me in, but then I think they did it so tastefully, the zombies and the blood, like you could shut your eyes if you wanted and you didn't want to see it. And it was like, it, I, I feel like it wasn't done as like a jump scare. You know, typically it is where they're turning a the corner and there's zombies. It was done every, every time you saw a zombie, I feel like it made sense in like yeah. this, the plot and like then the actions afterwards made sense. And I think they did a really good job with that storytelling. I agree. It was more realistic. Like I appreciated the remote, I think there was like a scene one of the earlier episodes where like Joel and Ellie are, they're like camping. It's like one of their first moments together. And Ellie's like, oh, are they infected out here? And he's like, no, it's like too remote for infected. I'm like, that's so interesting. The world that we, it helps like build that world where that makes total sense. They're not, they're not like traversing the entire United States. They're like yeah. in centrally located areas, like where there were cities. That makes total sense. Like. I appreciate it, and then that why that's why we didn't see them there, and why they weren't a huge part of those like parts of the story. Yeah, yeah I agree. I think those were like interesting. So when they did show up, it it kind of mattered more rather than them just being everywhere all the time. <laughs> right, just like around, yeah, like a, everything's a haunted house, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's like unnecessary. Do I think that it could have this show could have used even a, even for me? I'm like the show probably could have used a little bit more like zombies. Yeah. But it wasn't the reason why. It's not the point of yeah. the show like, at all. So it was okay for me. <laughs> it was so funny. And the next thing I actually want to talk about is like our thoughts on specific episodes. And mm -hmm. it was so funny that you mentioned that because some people really didn't like the episode with, um, uh, what's his name? Uh, Ron Swanson. I forget. What's the actor's name? Um, Nick Offerman. Nick Offerman. Yeah. Because there were no zombies. And I was like, come on. The storytelling was great. But anyways, yeah. I just wanted to start from the top of the season. What were your favorite episodes? What were your least favorite episodes and why? Hmm. I think my favorites. I think I have two that are like competing. I think episode five. Yeah, episode five, the one where they meet um, David and Henry. David? No. Sam and Henry. That's the name. Yeah, yeah. David's a different guy. <laughs> David's, <laughs> David's not a good guy. Sam and Henry. That one. Um, and that was like the most infected we actually see. I'm like a walking contradiction. I'm saying I don't like the zombies. And yet my favorite episode's like the most zombie heavy. <laughs> <laughs> it was the heaviest. I was going to say opposite. I That was my favorite episode because of like... All the horror and gore and everything about but go on sorry and maybe that's not what i like <laughs> that might be it um but then also episode eight that one was really good will i ever watch half of either of those episodes again probably not but yeah those are great those are my i think my favorite what about know. you and for context yeah. episode eight was the one where joel says Baby girl. <laughs> yes. No notes. I mean, that episode was really, it was, it was one of the more intense episodes too. And I like that the danger was not zombies. It was a white man. <laughs> wow. Can relate. Can relate. It was just really well done. Like I was terrifying mm -hmm. in every way. Yeah. Red flags immediately when he showed up. Just yeah. terrifying. You knew something was wrong. Um, for me, uh, I agree that my um, favorite episode as well was the uh, Endurance Survive, just the whole mm -hmm. story arc of uh, 
Sam, what did we say already? Sam and David. Sam and Henry. Sam, Sam and, and Henry. Henry. David is the bad guy. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> we don't want to confuse him. <laughs> That's true. What if we did, went through with it and people were like, what are you talking about? David. <laughs> the, the kind of cannibal yeah. like, My favorite. <laughs> God, horrible. Horrible. <laughs> Episode five, Endure and Survive, again, was also my favorite for, I think, for similar reasons that, like, uh, the storytelling was just great. You fell in love with these characters and something I appreciated about this these directors was that they really got you to believe these bonds, like obviously between Ellie and Joel, but then like these two random characters that we just met, Sam and Henry, I wanted to see them throughout their lifetime. And we technically did, <laughs> we technically did, but I, I wanted to keep following them. I thought it was, it was, it was great. Um, and then obviously like the, the horror at the end, the zombie parts of it, I really appreciated. I was like on the edge of my seat, like, this is awesome. <laughs> like just kept yeah. coming out and like, get, let's keep going. Um, yeah, that was probably one of my favorites. And then um, number six, where they go to Wyoming and go to the commune. And I thought that episode was great because you could put yourselves in the shoes of people in an apocalypse and think I, that's the, that's where I'd want to live. Like yeah. James, James and I, my partner, we were talking about like if there was an apocalypse, we're going west and building a commune. We're gonna have horses. It's gonna be great. We're gonna become <laughs> communists and also cowboys at the same time. It's gonna be yeah exactly what we do and like grow vegetables and stuff. That's where you'd want to be. I like how they you know the juxtaposition of like the city where there's tall buildings and skyscrapers, skyscrapers, which I feel like is a common. Um, like uh scene uh, you've seen other like uh, apocalypse movies right like with like maze runner yeah maze runner like in the city um i feel like that's a common scene but it's like okay what are people doing like out in wyoming and yeah building, yeah <laughs> ranches essentially so uh that's what i liked about that and meeting his brother when he yelled at <laughs> tommy <laughs> tommy the best <laughs> it was so loud i was like james are like whoa <laughs> have you seen the tiktok where it's like all of those like Tommy, help me! <laughs> no, I haven't seen that. <laughs> There's like a whole series of TikToks where it's like all the like yelling phrases that people have said. It's a whole, half of them being Joel, like Tommy, help me, <laughs> which is so sad. Um, but I agree. I like yeah. that episode a lot. I think it's, it goes back to like the earlier point of like what would we, what would it look like outside of those like metropolitan areas where like the zombies aren't there because they're zombies and they're not traveling that far yeah. and apparently fun fact about that episode is that jackson wyoming is apparently the most like it's like the wealthiest city in the u.s and it, it is that. like yeah i heard this this is actually i think i learned on twitter so there's like an irony to this where it's the wealthiest city in the u.s and the fact that in the show after the apocalypse it becomes like a commune it's a commentary to like the fact that this right now, currently, this place is like it, it, like it is being gentrified or not gentrified. I don't know if that's the right word, but to the point where people, it's unaffordable for people who are like who live there because wow. it's becoming so expensive because a lot of wealthy people have moved out there. Um, so it's just an irony of that of like, oh, in the apocalypse, it, all of these expensive, you know, wealthy winter homes or summer homes, whatever they are, have yeah. become part of a communist commune. Pendulum, and the pendulum swung from capitalism to communism. Communism, really yeah, just, like, yeah, yeah. It was like an interesting. That's not something I don't think it was obvious, but that's after reading some commentary or seeing like a video. I was like, oh, that's really, really interesting. <laughs> I don't know that. I just know they yeah. shot um, in Alberta near like Banff, Canada. And my the only thing I was thinking is my friend accidentally walked on set because she lives there. She accidentally like, walked on set. They weren't shooting that day, and she's like, "What's going on?" And then That's later amazing. she finds out it was The Last of Us. And I'm like, oh, what a dream. What a dream. She should yeah. have been in it. Like, I know. Yeah. What if we see her like in the back in one of these seasons? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I, absolutely. Like, why not? I think they get paid to be extras too. What a dream. We got to try one yeah. of these days. Move yeah. to Alberta. <laughs> Obviously. Uh, all right. So, Olivia, what episodes did you not like? Um, so my least favorite, it sounds bad. Like, I think my least, looking back, we talked about the Bill and Frank episode being it, not a weak episode, but maybe just it struggled narratively in the sense to connect to the rest of the story. I mean, I think 
the results of the Bone Freak episode really speak to why Joel makes the final decision or helps us on that walk. So I think that's like my second least favorite looking back at it. I actually think my least favorite now is the Ellie and Riley episode. Um, Cause at least with the Bill and Frank episode, they, we saw Joel and Ellie in the beginning and then we go to the Bill and Frank stuff and then go back to them. So we see kind of like how it, it it's like a puzzle piece in that larger story. Right, Cause after yeah. me like reflecting it, but with the Ellie and Riley episode, I, Nothing happens besides, like, Joel tells Ellie to leave after he gets stabbed, and then Ellie doesn't leave. And then we know why. We learned why because of her, like, story with Riley, her best friend slash crush. Like, but nothing happens narratively in that story. And especially when it becomes, like, you're an episode, what was it, seven? Episode seven of a nine-episode season. I'm, like, I'm, I'm, like, on fumes i'm just like give me anything i just want to see them like we're at the last bit of this story and i just want to like be with our main characters and so i think it was just tough near the end of the season to like divert so much even though we were with ellie like which is the probably one of its like most redeeming factors that it did that but otherwise like it's not about i didn't hate the episode by any means i thought yeah. it was still a good episode like as as an episode in itself, but I think just like structurally within a nine episode season where we're like, and like the season finale was too short. Like why yeah. was that episode longer than the season finale? Like I just should not have been. Why was the Bill and Frank episode longer than the season finale? Like while it was a beautiful episode, don't get me wrong. Like why was it longer than yeah. The finale, like it just should not have been. So the I think the finale was like forty minutes. That's insane. Yeah, I don't it understand. Flew by. I blinked, and we were in and out of it. And I'm like, this is this so. This is the like climax of the like emotional weight of like we've been waiting so long to get here, and it just flew by. Like we didn't. And I honestly, I think it was. I think it was weak. I mean, it, not weak. I think it was a weaker episode than like there are other episodes that were better. And I don't think yeah. the finale was the strongest episode, which is sad because it should be. It should be one of the stronger ones. They had giraffes. Like, they come had on. giraffes. <laughs> <laughs> Why were they there? Why were there giraffes? I don't understand. Why but, were the giraffes eaten? Yeah, I'm confused. <laughs> yeah. Easy targets, right? I don't know. <laughs> it's true. Why didn't someone shoot them? I don't know. I don't know why there were giraffes. I have questions about the giraffes. I think that's from the game. It is from the game. That's but what I yeah, heard. Why are there giraffes? I'm not sure. But <laughs> I think like in, if we had more time, then I would have no complaints about the Bill and Frank episode and the uh, Ellie and Riley episode, episode seven and episode three. Would have no complaints. I think it would be fine. But yeah. because we had so many, we had so little time like why did we divert so much like time yeah. so much time away from our main characters yeah those are my only complaints i have very similar thoughts yeah i i wish those episodes had more of the current plot the through line plot in them um yeah. like the visually that that episode with riley was very beautiful with, yeah like, you could imagine yourself there and it kind of reminded me of stranger things too it was a little bit nostalgic yeah even though their nostalgia was like from our lived lifetime which is funny it's true um but uh i think actually my least favorite was episode four when they crash the truck and they okay. end up in that city and there's that like vindictive rebel leader i forget her name um the only my critique of that is that uh not a lot happened in that episode even though they were building you up to get to know Sam and what's his name? Sam and Henry. Henry, Sam yeah. and Henry. They're building yeah. up to get to know Sam and Henry. Um, and you kind of need those filler episodes that get you from point A to point B. But I wish they spent more time talking about the politics between like Fedra and uh, the Fireflies. I feel like that's a mm. huge part of the game uh, that I don't have a good grasp on. I like initially in that episode, I didn't actually understand like the dynamics happening. I didn't know who she was a leader of. And yeah. it wasn't until I watched like the post episode discussion where they talked about like the reason they chose, you know, the actors and like what happened in that episode. And like, after like a, in history, after like a, like a revolution or rebellion, you know, the government steps in and once the government's taken over, oftentimes like, that the up and coming uh, leaders aren't great 
either. And that's what they were yeah. trying to represent. And I don't know if I got that. I, I just wish they spent a little bit more time discussing the politics of this, the nation now that like is non-existent, you know? Um, and that's like, a great point. Yeah. yeah. How did you feel? Did you feel similarly? Did you understand like, yeah, all those dynamics? I did not. I didn't even really think about it. I think like I'm so focused on Joel and Ellie because it's like, I am like a one track mind. It's like all I care about. <laughs> That I'm like, anything that diverts from that, I'm like, I'm upset. <laughs> That's all I care about. I hate it. But I hate it. I don't don't want to look at it. Can't see it. Um, but I agree. I actually, I totally agree. I think that that completely, they didn't follow through with that at all. Like the, the Fedra Firefly storyline kind of completely dissolved by the finale. Like we don't hear anything about it. Like it never really comes up again. Um, so that's a great point. And I agree, like, I liked that episode because, again, Joel and Ellie, we get their time together, which I appreciate. But I think spending too much time with Kathleen was weird. Like, why did she have to have, like, a two-episode arc? Yeah. In the same way that, like, I struggled with the other episodes where we divert. At least those were only one episode. Why did she have a two-episode arc? Yeah, I don't. Yeah, understand. I agree. I don't think she needed. It. And I will say, I love that actress. I do. She's in um, Yellow Car, Yellow Jackets. I forget what. Okay. Uh, it, again, it's coming out. And you, if you haven't seen, it's really good. Um, she's really great in that. But I just think that she was maybe miscast here. And I understand what they were trying to do. They're trying to get someone who's like more like maybe science based and like <laughs> is almost like a teacher, but like isn't like yeah. a, a brute who you would think like physically is a brute. I, I get what they were trying to do with the casting. I wonder if she was a miscast. But I still love her. I don't want any hate towards her. I know she got some hate on Twitter for a second. Yeah. And I still love her. Yeah. Cut out some of the Kathleen stuff. Shorten some of those other episodes. Yeah. Pacing is, I think, the show's weakest. Yeah. That's a good critique. Yeah. I yeah. think so. I think so. I'm curious how... I wonder if, like, directors take, like, notes from, like, the first season, analyze it, and then, like, pivot the next season. We'll see. More Pedro killing people... Our morals are out the door, so we're okay oh. with it. More murder, more of him just walking, <laughs> 10 out of 10, less random offshoot episodes, yes. <laughs> yes, agreed. Yeah, seeing him, like, torture people in the last episode, and then this, just, like, this is the most violent episode, and they, like, really got close up on, like, those bullet holes, and I'm like, I would actually close my eyes. Every time he would make a shot, I was like, oh, my God, yeah. oh, this is really aggressive. I'm like, I'm on your side, dude, but, like, I gotta watch like this. Right? <laughs> Go, maybe. Go. Okay, well. <laughs> this is terrible. <laughs> when he shoots the doctor, like, with that, he doesn't even look at him. I don't know if you saw that, like, when he, like, is, like, on her cur, and yeah. the doctor's like, I'm not, I'm not gonna let you take her, and he just, like, isn't even looking, and he shoots, and I'm like, oh, my God, like, yeah. awful, horrible. <laughs> Daddy? <laughs> Daddy was like, oh, <laughs> I'm like, just on. Okay. I love you, but like, calm it down a notch a little bit. Like, chill out. <laughs> chill out slightly. Like, you're up here at a 10, come down to like an 8. Like, yeah. like, like keep going, but like, like keep, yeah. <laughs> come down slightly. Yeah. That was, he was just like, the violence was unreal. It was, yeah. Yeah. Too much. A little too much. But it was, it was great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One thing we wanted to mention too was that uh, the directors were incredible. We thought they did a great job with this season and the creators, uh, spe specifically Craig Mason. He was also the creator of Chernobyl, and I watched that series. It was a mini series, and it was it was really eerily similar in the sense of the direction and the directing style and like the lighting, dark, right, mysterious. And I think he does such a great job of making you feel like something's wrong at all times and <laughs> it's clear in like this universe at the last of us like there's zombies right something could like happen to you but like chernobyl was a real thing that happened in real life and i feel like if anyone else had done it it might have felt like almost like a documentary it was obviously like a really traumatic thing that happened to a lot of people but um i think he did a good job of making you fall in love with characters who were real people during that time which he then did with uh, Ellie and Joel and he must he's just good at duos I think he's good at like having you put yourself in people's shoes and I feel like that's hard to do and we talk about something all the time of like when we analyze content uh people tend to just say what's happening and you actually said it best yeah there's like a, a few books that we've read 
I'm not going to name the books right now where they just tell us like what's happening or what someone's feeling and not necessarily like show us what they're feeling. Like I need to understand or I need to, it needs to be explained in a way that I can follow along with the emotions of like how this, these characters or these relationships are developed. And yeah, I agree. I think I, yeah, I haven't watched Chernobyl, but it's, he, he did a great job of doing that of like, can I, and then I think also how these like side characters where we get like Bill and Frank and we get Ellie and Riley and, and, and I'm going to mess up their names again, Henry and Sam, like these side stories, but then they also, we get attached to them, but then we also see how they like their stories relate to the larger narrative. I think that's like really tough to do to like create these side stories and then bring them back to like help us follow along with like why and ultimately Joel makes that final decision. Like each of those stories played a part and you can look back at it now and be like, Oh, that makes total sense. But in the moment you're kind of like, okay, I don't know what's going on. Like whatever. (laughs) Yeah. You still care. But yeah, I think that is very well crafted. Those, um, that like timeline. Yeah. It's, art the way he obviously it's obviously art but like i I was thinking like could i do this no i'd have to (laughs) go to their level of schooling whatever they did but i'm like that is incredible i don't know if i'd make the same decisions like so it's really cool to see how he's able to do this over and over again yeah that's and i want to i would watch chernobyl i'm i'm not a big fan like i said of i mean i guess not apocalypse show but i don't love those types of shows but clearly he's a talented director clearly or is he a director is that what he would be? Um, he so he I was looking it up because I thought he was. He might direct help direct, but there was like a specific director who's not him, but he was like yeah. a co-creator. So he must have overseen everything, right? Helped with like the overall direction. And he was the creator of Chernobyl. So I know you watched the cinematic like overview of, of what happens in the game. Um, what are your thoughts for season two? So I'm going into it blind. I don't like to be told spoilers. So I'm expecting the best obviously like i want to know what happens they always have me at the edge of my seat um and obviously with like the lies pedro joel tells ellie i'm curious how that will end not up pedro. <laughs> not him <laughs> not him. pedro's not a murderer um no. i'm curious what your thoughts are and like what are you excited for um so i have seen i haven't watched the cinematic playthrough of the second show or video game but I do know what happens to some extent. And so I won't spoil, I, we're opposites in this where you don't like spoilers. I am like, I emotionally can't take it. I need to know what happens so I can under, like if I can be emotionally invested. And I am, yeah, without any spoilers, I like, I'm excited and nervous and unsure what will happen, but excited. I'm like happy with how this ended and I think I accept it as is. So yeah. we'll see <laughs> what happens. People who know what happens in the second game are, will, will understand how I feel, I think. <laughs> um, would you want to give a shout out to your art and things you've been doing with the series as you've been watching it? Yes. Oh, that's so nice. Yes, I love drawing. Like, I drawing is like my form of like, emotion it's how i vent towards the things i love so much and the stories i love so much so i've drawn a lot of art for this series and um mainly just joel and ellie because i that's the reason why i like the show is their relationship and their journey so i've drawn a lot of that art you can see it on my instagram at viva v-v-i-v-a-a which 19 year old me i wish i could go back and tell her to not use that handle but that's just like um but yeah it's been a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. And like, it makes me, it inspires me to want to like write a story of such similar magnitude, you know, like that is so well done and so complex. And like, I love that the ending is so uh, like controversial. I don't know if it's controversial necessarily, but I like that it is, it opens up a discussion. I don't think it like ends in like a solid place. And I really, I really enjoy that as much as I also hate it, <laughs> enjoy it. You know, like it's like you're conflicted, but I love it. It's yeah. great. That's awesome. And what about your Patreon? Oh yes. If you want to doubt, if you want access to my art, you're so kind for like, of course. Like, so <laughs> shout out. Yeah. No, thank you. Yeah. If you want access to my art and want to see exclusive um, download, get exclusive downloads and other art that's not available, check out my Patreon. It's also at Viva. 
on patreon.com the links will be somewhere wherever they are in this somewhere yeah S somewhere in this scenario <laughs> i can't attest i have some of olivia's art and it's, it's 10 on 10 it's actually right next to my desk and yeah i'll probably oh. buy uh whatever poster you make of pedro in the future oh thank you i would love to i want to make all his i'm like getting embarrassed i'm like i should stop drawing him but also i can't don't stop him. yeah i can't never stop I, it's so weird. I love his nose. <laughs> I like, love it so much. I love drawing his nose. It's so much fun. It's such a unique shape. I'm like, this is weird, but I love it. <laughs> it is unique. It's like a divining, defining fact factor, facet of his face, along yeah. with his mustache, you know, his, his nose. Yes. Is, and his eyes. And it just, his eyes like have a unique shape. It's like, I love it. I don't know. It's like so unique and so much fun to draw. I'm like, yeah. this is weird, but I'm obsessed. <laughs> 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 so great. Not to brag, but I've been a fan of Pedro for a while. <laughs> I love yeah. him. He's great. Um, I, I first loved him as the Viper in Game of Thrones, and I followed him to Narcos, which is one of my favorite eras of him and his mustache. Very good. Um, his mustache is eras? Yes. He, it's been different. So, so uh, as the Viper, he had like a very thin mustache, and I actually wasn't a fan of that. Okay. I actually wasn't like super attracted to him, him physically, more so personality-wise. The Narcos, solid, 10 out of 10, great. He's, I think he's a little bit of a woman, womanizer in that show. And then Mandalorian, mm -hmm. can't even see him. No mustache, right? Uh, yeah. But yeah, Joel might be the best mustache uh, era for him. And plus I the agree. cotton jacket and like the older man uh, vibes. <sighs> so good. <laughs> it works for him, which is like weird. It makes me, it, did you see, I sent you a TikTok that was like, fully adult great brain frontal lobe fully developed yeah. when i saw this picture yes <laughs> this like a picture of like pedro I'm like i think i think this is what's happening <laughs> like, yeah fully adult brain fully developed at this point yeah he the older vibe is working for him with like a little bit of like salt and pepper mm. it's working so great yeah chef's kiss and his yeah. voice yeah his voice really great i mean and then his like normal self like that new episode of um hot ones amazing no notes he looks yeah. great his hair luscious incredible and he's funny Ugh, so good <laughs> and he's like respectful yeah it's like the whole package like he's good look it, i i think this is a great example it's not that he's not looking but i was not a pedro pascal fan girl previous to this but seeing like I don't know it was i don't know how i became one i think i just thought he looked good in the last of us but then like now his personality and then you're like oh personality does matter <laughs> right <laughs> it does who knew who would have thought knew? who would have thought so then now it's like it like i like my brain transformed and fully developed yeah. my frontal lobe fully developed and <laughs> now i'm like i see this i was blind and now i see and now i see, <laughs> and now I see. <laughs> I see it and I'm ashamed I didn't see it before. I just, it wasn't like I didn't think he was attractive. I just didn't really think about him at all. Yeah. And now, number one fan. Friend. Yeah. yeah. What a, it's so cool to see like he's like literally like a global phenomenon right now. And it's just so awesome. Like he's obviously been working for a while in Hollywood and now he's like getting his roses. You know, he's getting like the recognition he deserves, you know, being on Hollywood. Yeah. He's the host of SNL and it's just cool to see someone like and he seems so grateful and like humble. And I think that's a part of it is like if he was like, okay, to not to compare <laughs> celebrities, but like have you seen Austin Butler's interviews and his photos? Yeah. And it's just very bizarre. And if you compare the two to each other, like he does seem a little conceited, Austin Butler. And in comparison, like Pedro Pascal seems more genuine. Yeah, I think it's like I saw someone like ask him like how does it feel to get so like your fame like later in life. And not that he hasn't been like famous for years, but you're right. Like this is his like breakout moment, I think, um where he hasn't necessarily had that. And I think he's just like I don't forget what he said honestly. He was just like I'm grateful. And I think there's something to maybe the hip him getting it later in life that has kept him humble, but this, he's just a lovely guy, I think. Yeah. Just, just a good guy and i think it's like a good lesson to everyone too like oh just there's no age limit to success not that he's old he's not he's not decrepit or anything but he's like he's in his late 40s and i'm so happy he finally got his moment you know it can happen at any time 
That's true. You know what? That's a good point because, like, I feel like we're. I'm in my 30s now, unfortunately, and you're almost 30. Almost. Almost. <laughs> almost. Less than a month. And uh, a month. one thing we talk about is, like, as we grew up, like, in our 20s, we just assumed every celebrity was younger than us. Or, oh, sorry, was older than us. We just yeah. assumed, like, <laughs> you know, every celebrity that comes out is new or, or older. And But then as you age, the newer celebrities are younger, you know, uh, the media tends to, like, focus, hyper-focus on youth, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, and younger. so, like, you know, as we grew up, we're like, oh, like, Cardi B's younger than I am. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> and all these stars are younger. Um, Crazy. And Someday. so... Right, right, yeah. And it's, it's just crazy to think about like that we're older, you know, we could like mentor humans. Um, but yeah. it's cool to see him like as an older person, like and everyone loving him and it, his age doesn't matter. It's been a good like reset, like mental shift in how we like analyze celebrities, people who are like widely seen and widely observed. I agree, absolutely. It's refreshing. It's really refreshing. I mean, like it's, it makes me feel better as we get older to be like, yeah, the best could be yet to come. You know, like you don't know what could happen. It is like, it's like a nice little lesson. It's like, wow, your, your best could be yet to come and you're, you don't expire at any age. And in fact, you could be hotter than ever at a certain age. Cause yeah. he did get better with age. Yeah. He's That's aged it. well, like fine wine. Yes. Oh, one thing I wanted to mention is just like, I think um, Bella, Ramsey has done a phenomenal job too. I think she's That's true. an incredible actress. Um, I've only known her from like two things, like Game of Thrones, and then she was um, she's the voice of uh, the show I really love called Hilda. Have you seen it? No, I haven't. You gotta watch that. So you're gonna love it. It's like everything okay. I feel like you love, like <laughs> okay, like magic and I'm fantasy. In. Yeah. Um, so I, I just I was like I was skeptical though because I knew she had an accent for some reason. I was like I don't know if she can pull it off and. I think she did a great job. Yeah, I agree. We should have talked more about her because she's great. She her performance has been incredible. I didn't know she had an accent either. I I think from Game of Thrones, I would have I realized that, but and she only had a small part in Game of Thrones. She was like Lady Mormont. Yeah, she was such a baby when she played that. Um, but no, she was incredible, incredible actress. That last episode, the the one where she fights the cannibal predator, David. Who we now know his name, David. Yes, David. Was, uh, yeah, David. Her acting was fantastic. Like next level good. It some of the, the noises she made, like the screams, were terrible. It was awful, but just incredible acting. Like, yeah, she deserves just as much credit as Pedro Pascal. I don't know. I'd heard that there was critique of her casting because she doesn't look a lot like the video game version of Ellie, um, who is a little bit more like I don't know, just like stereotypical white girl attractive whereas like Bella Ramsey has like a different look to her like she but she's beautiful don't get me wrong but she doesn't look exactly like the character yeah um but I think she proved it out of the park amazing incredible yeah no no yeah she like fully encompassed like the the like uh the character in her personality and not yeah. so much the look yeah that's a good point which is more important anyway and like who cares what she looks like she looks amazing and she played the an amazing she handled the role really well right it, that's all that matters like <laughs> what else i agree there? and like to a degree yeah. like joel doesn't really look like pedro at all like, he, they kind of morphed him too but he's like what well, he's a chilean american like he <laughs> he doesn't look like what joel is supposed to look like no that's a good point yeah i, I agree like he he looks great. I I've seen pictures of because I watched the video game. I watched like a, a cinematic playthrough of the video game, and I'm like because I flipped it because I've watched the show before I watched the game. I'm like I don't like these. I don't like the way they look. <laughs> like, I like Bella Ramsey and Pedro yeah. Pascal better. Like so I'm sure I'm sure if I'd watched the game first, I would feel opposite. You know, it's understandable that people would be protective of the the visuals that they saw originally. Yeah, but I think they look amazing. I think amazing looks, acting, yeah. incredible. Well, thanks for joining us in this episode of Fangirl Feels. We're gonna do more of these. I don't know what we'll talk about next. Maybe a book, um, the Inheritance Games. Maybe we'll see. We have a lot of thoughts on that series. But if you want to hear more from us about our feels, follow us. Follow us here wherever you watch this. Follow it wherever you are. 
on any channel. It could be on my personal YouTube channel. It could be on Tanya's personal YouTube channel. What's your YouTube? Do you have a YouTube channel? I do. Oh, yeah. I forget what like my ad is, but it'll be in the bio or you might be watching it right now. So we haven't thought that part through. That's okay. No, we're new <laughs> to this, but we will figure it out. It will be, all the links will be down below. Follow us if you want to see more. Let us know what else you want to see, what other things you want us to review. If you want us to talk more about The Last of Us. I mean, I feel like we could talk more about it. I got a lot oh, yeah. of it. Well, thanks for watching, guys. We'll we'll be back. Thanks for watching. Woo! Hopefully, there's music. Bye. Yeah. Yeah. Bye. I have some music. I